not say this to our people, those who are living. That it is because of the sacrifice of those brave men and women that that is the singular reason why we are not stopping the same faith as those of them from the middle belt and to a very limited extent, those of our brothers and brethren from the Uruguay Republic. Why am I saying this? It is only in our land today that we do not have any significant presence of foreign terrorist organizations in our bushes and in our forests. And why is that the case? Because our fathers taught us how to fight. They fought for Biafra on aided, unassisted for over three years. We fought the two strongest major powers in the world at that time, the USSR and Great Britain. Egypt fought against us. The OAU was against us with the exception of the likes of Julius Nyerere and Rupert Brown of Cote d'Ivoire. We suffered immensely. And now, like them, Israel was under attack and they couldn't provide any meaningful help. But we survived it. Not out of our own mind, not out of our own power, we survived it because God Almighty in heaven was with us. And this generation have now come to complete the work that those of them of 67 to 1970 started. And we are not going to stop. I want the world to understand me very clearly. We are not going to stop. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter how many lives they extinguish. It doesn't matter the genocidal tendencies they bring with them into our land. We are not going to stop. Everybody listening, everybody watching, everybody remotely interested in justice and peace must understand this. Our destination is freedom, and that very place we're heading to is Biafra. And nobody, no soul on this earth can stop us. Instead of Biafra not to come, we all perish. I want our adversaries, our enemies to understand this very, very clearly. We are not going to retreat, not one iota, not one inch, because Biafra must come. Because the hatred has continued to this very day. As I'm speaking and addressing all of you right now, they are still arresting extrajudicially murdering people in our land, people who are alien to our culture, our way of life, our tradition. They are in our land directing their people to slaughter, to kill without mercy. Unfortunately, those we regard as political leaders have connived with these people to ensure the decimation of their own population. That is the type of nonsense we can no longer condone. As you all know, there is no significant planning presence in our land because our fathers taught us how to fight. And we are doing so today without apologies to any idiot. We are not going to apologize because we have been apologizing for nearly 50 years. And we have not gotten anywhere in terms of our collective advancement and development in the damnable Zoological Republic called Nigeria. That is why we must continue what we're doing. And that is why anybody who is remotely interested in the affairs of our people must understand this. That we are determined, doubly determined. 50 years, or should I say 54 years is a very long time. And 51 years is the end of the war. But now that we have come, or should I say, now that God Almighty in heaven to go to God and open him has them that we should come, we are not going to relent. We are not going to do anything whatsoever to jeopardize the sanctity and the holiness of this very mission. We love our people. We love every ethnic nationality that makes up Nigeria as it is presently constituted. We have no hatred towards anybody. We love peace, we love life, we love the progress of other people, but we are in a country where people hate us for no reason, where people despise us for no reason, and we can no longer go on apologizing. And Nigeria as a state, the entire Africa as a continent, must acknowledge. The same way they acknowledge the genocide in Rwanda, they must rise up to acknowledge the genocide in Japan or else there will be no peace for development in the whole of Africa. And I'm not saying it apologetically. I am stating a fact that ought to be forcefully demanded for. And the Biafra itself must be restored for those who have come before us, for their sacrifice, for their courage, for their gallantry and their bravery. It is a very good thing today that 
one of the closest years of my brother Dele, a man that I cherish and appreciate very much. And also the very excellent work that Mazi is doing. But let us make this thing very, very clear. We were wronged by the Nigerian state, by every ethnic group in Nigeria. I know that my good friend and brother, Obadiah Mailafia, rang me and apologized a while ago for the role that they played in the massacre of Biafran people, the role that they played in aiding and abating a very unlawful invasion of Biafra land, because all Odubu asked for was restructuring. The same thing we're arguing for today. Odubu went to Aburi to argue for restructuring. Odubu did not go to Aburi to declare any state of Biafra. He never went to Aburi to declare any war. Odubu went to Aburi so that all of us in Nigeria, including those from the Middle Belt, from the West, everywhere can have freedom. The same thing we're asking for today. They twisted the narrative. They changed our history. They turned it upside down. They made us the villain. They tried to demonize our general, a man of peace that went to Aburi in Accra to go and to Ghana to go and negotiate for peace. A peace that Britain prevailed upon go on, not implement. But over the years, we've been told that we were the aggressors. Such nonsense can no longer hold, it can no longer obtain, and that is why, as I said earlier, unapologetically, we are pursuing the freedom of Biafra, and nobody can stop us. Anybody on our path is going to fall, is going to die. Instead of Biafra not to come, every living organism in Nigeria will die, I swear to God Almighty in heaven, because we are not going back. It is a good thing today that every some notable Nigerians are on this very platform discussing what transpired 54 years ago. Most have tweeted to say, may it not happen again. The only way to ensure that this will not happen again is the existence of a free, sovereign, Biafran nation. That is the only panacea, nothing more, nothing less. Before we came here, Nariko Market was on fire. These vandals and vagabonds are in our land killing people relentlessly. As I'm talking to you right now, they headed some people from Enugu to God knows where, maybe to go and kill them. And you have governors, you have political leaders, you have those who aspire to high office. They are all there, nobody's talking, nobody's speaking, because they have a lot to benefit and to gain by us being planned slaves. Something that can no longer continue something we are not prepared to tolerate. There was something I said rather very fortuitously very many, many days ago. I said during one of my broadcasts on Radio Biafra that for Nigerians to understand that God is upset with them, that every tribe in Nigeria, every ethnic group in Nigeria will experience what we passed through during the Biafran War, that they too will also become refugees. And today, there are ID camps, IDP camps everywhere. People that thought they were safe before now are fleeing their homes. The same thing that happened to us between 67 and 1970. And that is why our appreciation and our thanks for those men and women that fought to keep us safe can never, ever, ever be overestimated. We will continue to appreciate them. We shall continue to honor them. And I thank all of I mean, those who are non-Biafran. I understand that some people who are Biafrans came on this very platform and trying to play the script of their masters. That same divide and rule by saying there is something called uh, Southeast and South South. All Bongong, I have said it many times on many fora, on many platforms, that everybody in the East, we are all one people. I don't understand why people are hung up about this divide and rule of the world. It was go on that created first river state. Go on created river state. Not because he loves the people of the South, not at all, but because he wanted to divide us. And we must rise up. We must rise up to the game of these people and say no to them. Now that Yoruba and Igbo are one, do you see them trying to play that game anymore? Now that Biafra and Odudua are one and inseparable, bonded together in one, do you see them playing their stupid games? 
I don't know why some people will come and say that from Nigeria, that from that from South South. In all that is perpetuate that very division, which the Polonists have cleverly exploited over very many decades and many years. I don't know when we are going to learn. And the sooner we learn, the better for us. I thank all of you once again. And this very effort to recognize the genocide against the Afrans continues until the United Nations and the whole world rise up to this very challenge and acknowledge that a great deal of injustice was done to the Afrans. Tomorrow is our week at home. Complete and utter lockdown everywhere. And as I said earlier, I do commend the governors for coming out and saying that civil servants should not come or should not turn up to work tomorrow. It's a very good thing. We must all be bound together in order to ensure that Nigeria, first of all, takes the blame for what they did, and secondly, that the whole world will rise up to the obligation to do oppressed people and do the very right thing. Once again, I thank you all very much, and my very special thanks to Professor Ejiofo for the very wonderful and stellar work that you have been you and your team. Thank you very much. And if you go together and be with all of you. Thank you. My mentor, Mazin Nandekanu, the welcome. Thank you, bro.